thanks a lot. Uh, I would like uh, to thank first and foremost uh, uh, Dalcin for giving me an opportunity of giving this presentation and congratulating uh, the entire group, uh, the entire team of Vinidea for this beautiful and very relevant conference that you've uh, organized. I'll be discussing uh, the effect on uh, a colloidal stability um, and color stability in red wines uh, of uh, alternative methods uh, to low temperatures. Now, wine is a hydroalcoholic solution uh, to get, uh, at the same time, uh, a colloidal dispersion. So you find uh, uh, colloids in wine, which are either molecules or aggregates of uh, uh, molecules, uh, and their properties depend on their sizes. We have proteins, polysaccharides, and aggregated polyphenolic compounds, and we've heard something about this already today. The size of the colloids go from a few nanometers to a few micrometers. The conditions of the colloids, if unstable, can leave the wine turbid or clear. One of the uh, reasons for uh, deposits on the bottom uh, or turbid wines uh, is uh, the aggregation of colloids. And uh, when the colloids precipitate, uh, they might uh, uh, bring along a color. So color might precipitate as well and therefore it'll be lost. So it's important uh, for uh, the winemaker to understand uh, why you have colloidal um, turbidity and find solutions uh, to prevent it. Our knowledge on colloids and uh, related processes are only uh, partially um, um, are only partial because it is a very complex phenomenon. A lot of research has been carried out also because colloids are, are very interesting because of the sensory characteristics of the wines, because colloids have a lot of impact on the sensory characteristics, particularly uh, astringency. Back to white wines. The most important uh, polyphenolic compounds in white wines are uh, flavans. And many studies uh, have uh, um, ascertained uh, the ability on the part of these molecules to create aggregates. The formation of aggregates, uh, that is colloids, is associated with the composition of these molecules, the degree of their galloylation, but also the presence of hydroxylated or diad hydroxylated groups. We know generally that if flavans are condensed, they will tend to aggregate and this uh, self-aggregation will uh, increase their size up to a certain cutoff uh, between uh, five, eight units. Uh, then apparently this uh, tendency to self-aggregation will tend uh, to reduce. So this has an influence on the size of the aggregates uh, and their solubility. Other connected aspects, as we shall see in the results of the study that I'm going to present, uh, point to uh, the relevance of the concentration of uh, these molecules. So as concentration increases, the size uh, also increases uh, and their solubility declines uh, for these aggregates. Uh, other aspects uh, that uh, play a role in colloidal stability uh, are the wine's composition in terms uh, of alcohol content. Generally, alcohol is a stabilizer um, for wines and then the ionic uh, strength which represents uh, uh, the uh, content in terms of salt uh, in the wine which are destabilizing contrary to alcohol. Now generally speaking when we talk about flavans uh, uh, we are uh, talking about uh, many compounds, including those that uh, are formed during vinification and storage, and that come from the uh, auto-oxidation, self-oxidation of flavans and the condensation of flavanols, uh, flavans and anthocyanins, and anthocyanins and other wine metabolites uh, such as uh, pyran anthocyanin, pyranoanthocyanins. The solubility of aggregates is the result uh, of interactions between different forces. The two main forces at play are attraction forces 
or repulsion forces, uh, van der Waals respectively, and polar forces associated with the presence of hydrophilic groups in the molecules. Other macromolecules are represented by proteins. The concentration of proteins uh, can vary depending on the cultivar. We've heard this morning that proteins uh, are a cause of instability, especially in white wines. And recently, a study by Professor Marangon proved uh, that these uh, proteins in red wines are, are never uh, free, but uh, uh, associated, uh, bound, uh, bonded to colloidal uh, complexes. Uh, then uh, proteins can interact with tannins, uh, creating uh, colloidal uh, complexes um, as it has been uh, studied uh, for um, wine fining and uh, the use of protein fining agents. We know that the presence of uh, hydrophilic molecules on the surface of colloids can have a stabilizing effect due to their uh, hydrophilic repulsion rejection. And uh, these molecules are uh, the uh, polysaccharides in the grapes and the yeasts, uh, which can have a stabilizing effect vis-a-vis uh, -vis the colloids and this effect uh, seems uh, to be based uh, to depend also on their concentration which is their ability to completely um, cover the surface uh, coat to the surface of an unstable colloid recently and i'm going back to professor marangon's work we've heard uh, a very interesting uh, uh, we've listened to a very interesting webinar where um, the new colloids were being discussed, uh, the new colloids uh, that were found in wines, which are uh, obtained uh, from the aggregation of uh, polyphenols, proteins, polysaccharides, and others uh, where you uh, have tannins and polysaccharides. Now, in practical terms, uh, the interesting fact uh, is how to measure the colloidal stability of wines. Colloidal stability can be assessed uh, by means uh, of uh, tests uh, um, on wines uh, kept at low temperatures. Uh, tests can vary depending uh, um, uh, on uh, the test uh, uh, design between minus four and five degrees C for a few days. Lowering the temperature uh, is uh, necessary to um, uh, reduce the solubility of uh, the colloidal complexes favoring interactions uh, uh, between uh, colloids. Now, uh, the test uh, uh, that we've carried out uh, consisted in keeping the wine at four degrees C at uh, 48 uh, uh, hours. Uh, the turbidity was expressed in NTUs, uh, and uh, when it was below one, uh, the wine was regarded as uh, stable. So how can we improve uh, the colloidal stability of the wines? Uh, or you can use a juvent uh, to um, take out or to remove uh, the instability factors, uh, um, the um, aggregated polyphenols, uh, proteins, uh, or um, with the addition of additives uh, um, for to uh, take care of the colloids in the wine. The test that I'm going to describe is ongoing, so these are the early results, and we uh, compared uh, the uh, use of eight different uh, juvents and four different uh, wine uh, uh, additives uh, to assess uh, the uh, stability of two in unstable reds. Uh, these wines uh, had uh, undergone malolactic fermentation and they were stabilized uh, for tartaric precipitations without using uh, cold uh, technologies, uh, not to, to interfere with the colloidal instability. So they were uh, stabilized uh, by electrodialysis uh, dialysis and and uh, exchanging resins uh, uh, for Barbera and Montepulciano d'Abruzzo, respectively. Here you see the composition of the wines uh, that uh, were in the test. Uh, they were very different. One had a medium to low level of anthocyanins and tannins, and Montepulciano was, on the contrary, rich in anthocyanins, uh, um, pro-anthocyanidins, uh, etc. The treatments um, uh, were um, um, duplicated uh, with the use of the adjuvant uh, and uh, the additives. Uh, it, it was kept at low te uh, temperature. It was kept at uh, low temperature, and then uh, it was uh, uh, filtered. They were filtered. Um, the slider shows the products uh, that we used uh, as adjuvants, uh, their uh, doses, uh, the method, and in the next uh, slide uh, you see the four additives uh, that were used, uh, the doses, and the method of uh, use. Uh, here are 
some results. Now, these results are referred to Barbera, one of the two wines, which was analyzed immediately after uh, bottling, after six months uh, in the bottle and after one year in the bottle or from bottling. The treatment uh, determined a slight decline in turbidity in all the samples, in all the batches. All the wines were uh, clear. So it further reduced uh, the turbidity. And uh, during uh, storage, uh, uh, all the wines uh, treated uh, with fining agents have kept uh, uh, wines, uh, um, uh, have remained uh, clear. The only case of instability that uh, was uh, um, um, that only uh, became uh, uh, turbid uh, uh, after uh, the addition of the adjuvant uh, was this one. Now, let's go see the tests of colloidal stability. In this case, the uh, better results were obtained using uh, um, with sodium bentonite, uh, were obtained with sodium bentonite. Uh, the, Control initially was 30 units after bottling. You see that the results are reproducible. You see um, bottling six months after bottling and 12 months after bottling. Carrying out to the same test uh, later on after bottling at uh, six and 12 months, we've seen a good result for uh, calcium bentonite and then the gelatina result, uh, which was not uh, evident from the beginning. We also carried a second test. We kept the wines uh, at high temperature. Temperatures. When I say high temperature, I don't mean it's a hot test. Uh, uh, the wines were all um, stable for pr protein stability at high temperatures, uh, um, 40 degrees uh, C uh, for one day and 40 degrees. Uh, the 40 degrees uh, uh, were um, used, uh, uh, were reached in order to simulate a thermal test uh, during transportation, as discussed this morning as well. Only uh, sodium bentonite uh, in the most extreme uh, uh, conditions, uh, seven days at 40 degrees, uh, made it possible to uh, prevent an increase in turbidity, which contrary, uh, on the contrary uh, was seen in all the other batches and all the other samples. And then uh, you have a calcium bentonite as a second best. Uh, this is after three months of storage and six months of storage. Clearly, an adjuvant will remove uh, uh, substances so we'll see what proportion of anthocyanins and total flavonoids um, were uh, removed after the treatment with bentonite and uh, gelatins, etc. Uh, there, uh, there are treatments uh, um, with uh, seven percent uh, at a seven percent level with bentonite and PVI and PVP uh, flavonoids. Uh, um, hot soluble gelatin was uh, the one that removed the most substances. So when it comes to turbidity and additives, in this case, again, there's not a big effect onto the turbidity of the wine or clearness of the wine. There's a slight increase in turbidity, but throughout the storage period, the figures, the readings remain below turbidity levels. So the wines were all in all clear. Limpid. The uh, colloidal uh, stability test in this case uh, shows a different uh, response uh, to the additives. So monoprotein 2, for instance, uh, is uh, the additive that provided interesting results uh, throughout uh, the storage period, including after 12 months uh, in the bottle. Uh, uh, um, then GAM gave this uh, uh, interesting result, uh, then the effectiveness uh, was reduced. Uh, 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 during uh, um, storage. Uh, we also repeated uh, the shock test at 40 degrees uh, for seven days. In this case, uh, manoproteins uh, have uh, given interesting results, the same uh, manoprotein as before, uh, manoprotein 2, that had uh, provided good results also in the cold test. Uh, these results are, are as interesting uh, um, when you uh, consider this natural polymer. I'm presenting to you the same results repeated after six months of preservation of storage, which is in line with the results of the previous samples. 
I would like uh, to present uh, to you the results uh, for Montepulciano d'Abruzzo, where the tests are underway as we speak. In this case, you see that the wine was extremely limpid, the initial wine in purple. Uh, the addition uh, and treatments uh, with fining agents uh, led uh, to a slight increase, but in all the cases, uh, we see uh, readings uh, that uh, are uh, below. Um, uh, they're very low and after uh, three months uh, the uh, readings have re had remained at the same levels in this case uh, the wine was extremely rich in anthocyanins and uh, polyphenols as i told you before so uh, and in the course of the preservation the stability that was pretty high uh, increased further instability sorry instability worsened uh, so um, increasingly uh, the compounds can become more and more um, insoluble uh, none of the uh, products used uh, stabilized the wines and the same held true after three months of storage it is interesting to notice uh, that uh, the behavior of the wines uh, after the shock test uh, at 40 degrees um, so how after the shock test of one day turbidity the uh, turbidity delta was even negative so the turbidity was lower than uh, the turbidity of the initial wine after uh, seven days at 40 degrees uh, the increase in turbidity um, is uh, very low for all uh, the products uh, below one these wines uh, that were particularly unstable at low temperatures behave totally differently uh, when uh, the temperature uh, is uh, kept at 40 degrees uh, for seven days after six months uh, the um, the um, instability remains um, um, uh, and uh, the higher instability is caused by fish glue with the probable presence of residues that of this product that destabilize the wine further now with the um, in terms of removal so the removals in this case uh, is uh, uh, are even more modest than what we observed for barbera and uh, uh, the maximum is just uh, above 2% for sodium bentonite for anthocyanins and 5% in the case uh, of cold soluble gelatin uh, for the polyphenols. The same test was also carried out for the adjuvants, sorry, additives, uh, she corrects herself. So the additives uh, as applied to Montepulciano wine. These are uh, the uh, limpidity of the wine. The wine was limpid and the addition of uh, the additives uh, led uh, to a minor increase uh, while the wine remained uh, clear uh, all the same. With one, uh, with one uh, exception, we have a slight increase in turbidity, which uh, um, is also the case after three months in the bottle. In this case, again, no additives uh, made it uh, possible to stabilize the wine. The best results were obtained with manoprotein too, and uh, especially with a natural polymer. These are, are the data after bottling, soon after bottling, and then we see the same after three months in the bottle. Here you see, on the contrary, the results of the shock tests for the additives with Montepulciano. Uh, you see, uh, for instance, very interestingly, uh, the test at seven days, the 40 degrees the C, uh, after the addition of manoproteins and of the natural polymer, polymer you see that uh, at the end of bottling, and then after three months, we see even a reduction in turbidity, as if uh, the... Uh, distribution of colloids and molecules in colloids were rearranged so that a better stability is reached, making the final wine more clear. 
And uh, this particular interaction uh, is uh, worthwhile studying further, which is what we're doing. In conclusion, we've seen uh, two totally different wines with two totally different results at Barbera with a medium to low uh, content of anthocyanin and, and tannins uh, and in unstable, excellent result uh, with uh, sodium bentonite uh, and manoproteins. Uh, and uh, Dr. Manara, who is going to take the floor after me, will discuss these two uh, substances, these two compounds. So it is uh, uh, confirmed that carboxymethylcellulose cannot uh, remove uh, uh, colloids uh, to a significant uh, uh, level so cmc is a destabilizer for red wines uh, so in the case of montepulciano wine which has a, a high content of anthocyanins and tannins because of uh, the problem that i have uh, uh, presented at the uh, beginning of my speech uh, because the tannins uh, uh, will create aggregates, the best results were obtained using the same products as sodium bentonite uh, and hot soluble gelatin uh, in terms of adjuvants and manoprotein too, and especially natural poly the natural polymer for additives. But when the wine has an instability which is associated with the uh, rich, uh, the wealth of uh, compounds it contains, the treatments and the tests uh, um, the wines uh, gave very different results uh, between them. So it is very interesting and so we should investigate more uh, the effect of certain additives uh, when uh, uh, they are added to wines in combination with uh, a uh, um, mild uh, uh, increase in temperature. This concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening so attentively and I'm here to take your questions.